Oh, John 3.16. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave. So when God loves, what do you do? He gives to you. He gives. So Ephesians 2 verse 8. He said what? He said not, verse 9. He said not of works. Let any man should what? Let any man should boast. Which means that what? You did not work for it. There's nothing you will do to receive God's grace. And I'm going to show you. There's nothing you can do. It's not of works. Because if it's of works, you can boast for it. You can begin to say, man, I work out for God. 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 That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm righteous. That's why I'm healthy. No, it's not of works. It's not of works. It's not, he has nothing. Nothing to do about what you do. It has nothing to do about it. It has nothing to do about it. So when the Bible says, for by grace are you saved, through faith, not of yourself, but it is what it is a gift of God. Then it means that it is a gift. It has nothing to you. It is grace. What is grace? It means unmerited favor. What you don't deserve. You don't deserve it. You, are, you don't merit it. And God is no man. His ways are different from our ways. So, it's man's way that you must do something for you to get. Are you getting what I'm saying now? In Yoruba Palace, they say even among children, they said, Omotoba Shekman Yamagbe. What does it mean? That is a child that lifts up a shoulder. That is the mother will be able to carry. Him. So, even though you want your mother to carry you, if you don't lift up your hands, what happens? Do you understand what I'm saying now? So, you see that even in parenthood, you have to walk. But when it comes to grace, you, there's nothing you have to do. It has been provided for you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Isaiah 55 verse 8. He said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, say the Lord. For as heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than yours. So God's ways is higher than us. He's not dealing with us the way men do. He's not. Maybe you have not been able to receive a no love by your parents and you begin to use that love to commensurate or to think about God's love. No. It's far different. He said, before I formed you, I know you. So even before your parents conceive you, God loves you. He knows you. So his love for you supersedes your parents' love. Supersede. So you keep walking on heads just like, nobody loves me. Nobody loves me. My mother does not love me. My dad does not love me. My friends does not like me. In my place of work, everybody does not like me. Why? Does it really matter if they don't like you? What really matter is what God says. Is what God does. Is a show of love towards you. And he loves you endlessly. 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 He loves you. So on Thursday... You were in church. I showed us some passage about work and grace. And I ended it by saying that in John 3, 16, in John chapter 3, verse 3, he said, one of the rulers came to meet Jesus. His name is Nicodemus. And he asked him, what must I do to be saved? How can I get saved? How can I get this eternal life? Ha, Baba, you have been talking about this thing. How do I get it? And Jesus told him, you must be born again. And I told us that what Jesus told him was an impossible thing. Are we together, church? What Jesus told him was what? Was an impossible thing because it is impossible to be what? To be born again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? How many of you are born again in this place? How many of you are born again? It is impossible to be born again. Do you understand what I'm saying now? The man is a religious ruler. He knows the law. He knows the scripture. And the man told him, you have to be born again. The man looked at Jesus. Ah, Jesus, if you like to make a good name, Jesus, may give him. You know what they talk to? Because I can't meet you. Look at this small. How can you tell me to be born again? Who, who among you can your mother born again? Are you getting what I'm saying now? Who among you? It is impossible. So Jesus was not telling him what is possible. He was telling him what is not possible. So to be born again is not possible. Follow me carefully. To be born again is not what? It is not possible. Why? Because it is impossible for man to be born again. Are you hearing me, church? 
it is impossible for man to be what? To be born again. That was what Jesus was saying. That you have to be born again. You know, man, you see like a cliche. Mm -mm, it is not. It is impossible. But what Jesus was trying to show him, it is not possible by what you do. Can you born yourself again? He said, no, you cannot, then you cannot save yourself. You cannot save yourself. So he said you can only be born of water and spirit. He now looks at it. Ah, what was this man saying? I, do, you, do you swear you took him to? I should be born again. Then water and spirit. So it is, look like, how can I be born again through water and spirit? Are you getting what I'm saying now? I think you will tell me to fast for seven days. I thought you would tell me to do dry fasting 91 days. After all, I will not be saved. But God told him that what? He has to be born again. Impossible thing to do. Because with man, it is impossible. But with God, it is possible. I also told us from the book of Luke's this thing. He said a certain young Eula, smart guy, very devoted guy, came to make Jesus is it Luke 16 or Matthew 16? Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Came to meet Jesus. So when he came to meet Jesus now, he told him, what must I do to be saved? Similar to what Nicodemus asked Jesus. And Jesus looking. He said, you know the law? Keep the law. And the guy, <laughs> he carrying clothes. Law. Having doing all that, 10 commandments, are those still? I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't humanize like all these other brothers, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't do night calling. I, I'm a good guy. I'm faithful. So if that's all it takes, then I am saved. Then Jesus looked at him. He saw the way he was carrying himself. Jesus went closer. He said, "Go and sell everything that you have. Give it to the poor." Listen to me. When Jesus told him that, he looked. The Bible says the man became weak and sad. Do you know why? Because he was a very rich man. And I told us that that is not a criteria for salvation. Jesus told him to give him same similar illustration that he gave Nicodemus to others tell you the impossible things to do. Because it is not about what you do. So there are some of you who are trying to be self-righteous. Who are striving so hard to become great, to become closer to God, to, to become safe and justified. You think it's by what you do? No. So listen to me. Then in the next verse, what Jesus told me, he said with man, what he says, it is impossible do you understand now? With man, what happens? It is impossible what? to be saved. Because the disciples came to meet him. Jesus, if it's hard for a rich man to be saved, if it's hard for Nicodemus, religious not to be saved, then how can we be saved? Who are we? Do you understand? Now? And Jesus told them the two answer. He said, with man, it is impossible. But with God, what is happening? All things. Is that your reality? Is that a reality? That means salvation is only possible by God's possibility. It's only God that makes you save. Nothing that you do to it. Nothing. Nothing of your own works. And this is very hard for a religious man to believe because he feel like, no, pastor, there's something I must do. There's nothing you have to do. This is what the gospel is. This is the salvation truth. This is what the Bible is. There's nothing you have to do. There's nothing you have to do. You have no work, no part to play in salvation plan. Do you understand? Sir? You have no part. There's nothing. There's no strifing. There's no strifing. So that people are just strifing. Ah, this heaven at last. Make I get there. This heaven at the end. Ah, God. You know, working so hard in this heaven, sweating. No. You are not working. It's impossible with man. You cannot get there by your own. Are you getting what I'm saying now? No matter how much you work, every you is not sure. Because on your own, you can never get there. It's not cause. Because you can never. It is only by grace. That is the why God gave us Jesus Christ. Because you have looked at it. No one. He said, I look on it. No one is righteous. 
Do you understand? No one, not one man. So if no one is righteous, then how come are you saying people are not good those days? Are you saying people are not kind? Are you saying people are not keeping the law? They are, but no one can be righteous on their own. It is only by grace. Glory to God. It is only by grace. So it's only God that can make you righteous. That's why he said, he said his only begotten son, the man without sin, to die for you. What did he do? To input, to get your own sin upon himself. Him is righteous. What did he do? He transferred his own righteousness into you. By that vote, what do you become? You become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Tell the boss, say, I am righteous. Say, I am righteous. I am righteous. I am righteous. I am righteous. You've received it. So we are not struggling for it. We are not. We are not. We are not. Ephesians 1. Let me show you a scripture. Verse 5. Give me a passion translation. Read from verse 1 to 8. The Bible says, for it was always in his perfect plan to adopt us his delight children. Do you hear that now? So it has always been God's plan to adopt us as his delight children through our union with Jesus, anointed one, so that his tremendous what love that cascade over us with what we glorify his grace for the same love he asked for his beloved one, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's what do you say? I didn't hear your voice, George. I, do you see yourself there? Do you see yourself there? I told you when you are getting something, you know who is getting for and who is getting to for. Do you understand what I'm now? This who is getting for. The same love he asked for who? No. The love he asked for who? Listen. The love God asked for who? Does God love Jesus? Temporarily or forever? Unfailingly? Unfailingly? Can he fail? He cannot. So he listen. So he said, for the same love he asked for his beloved one, Jesus. He asked for who? And this unfolding plan bring him what? So what happens to God about this plan? He's happy about it. Are you rejoiceful about it? If God is rejoiceful about you, that you are one with Christ, do you understand what I'm saying now? That he loved you, then you should not be sad about it. There are many people who, who know Jesus and they are sad. Carry sad face up and down. No joy on their face. You know, sometimes I tell you when you when you go to a bank or you go to the market and you go to some places, that's some people you should not go and meet. I, I know them very well. Like there was a time I used to have signature issue. Each time I sign, my signature is not always, always the same. Each time, every time there's always so when I go to a bank. I'll just go and meet that. Anybody just go and meet. just look at the lady, you know. I feel like this lady looks like a sister, you know, no earring and everything, you know. She'll be my sister and brother. So I go, hello, sister. You have them. And give. Look. Thanks, give. The show is this. The show is not. We are not fighting. They say, no, no, no. Go and recite. Go and recite. Every time. So one day. So I learned another skill. So when I'm going to bank those days in school, when I enter the bank, I'll be looking at the ladies. Those ladies used to put them most of the time. The one with fire earring, <laughs> with with wig. I'll just go and meet. I say, sorry, your hands look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Your hair too is fine, fine. So please, can you help me look at this? Oh, I'm sorry, bro. This is a signature is not really tarry. But can you? I said, see, I have tried. I don't know how to do. Okay. Okay, let me turn my screen for you. Very, I receive grace from people who people think they are unbeliever than someone I thought was a believer that should help him. Are you get what I'm saying now? Listen to me. To be to wear cut and sew does not mean that you are saved. Do you, it's not a. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Not to wear earring and do kogoba. I don't. Sorry, what's the right words? All back. Thank you very much. <laughs> and to do all back does not simply means that you are a good guy. So there's some brother we like Ankara and Toza. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Does it mean that they are a good guy? You see them coming to the church now. That's come holy. Carry big Jack's Bible here. Yeah? Thomas Phillips Bible here. Yeah? Everything. One Bible here. Yeah? One Bible here. Yeah? And nobody is looking at me. I think I'm talking to him. Don't worry. One Bible. Yeah? No, no, no. That's not what it means. 
So when you not see a guy wearing a jean, do you understand? And with a boot, you know, air off. Just look at that guy. That guy knows a big God. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's not my work. No, it's a God. <laughs> so he said what? He said, for it was, it's always in his perfect plan to adopt you, to adopt you as his children. So God has it as a plan to adopt us as his children. Verse 7. Since we are not joined to Christ, we have been given what? Treasure of what? Of redemption by his what? What have you been given? The treasure of redemption. That means the what? Redemption. There's a treasure in it to be redeemed. To be redeemed means to be forgiven. By his blood. What this is this? The total what? I can't hear your voice, church. Oh, I'm preaching better than you are responding. By the total what? I, is that your sin? Is it written there? I don't understand. Is your sin written there? Sorry, that sin that you cannot tell daddy, is it written there? That you cannot tell your best friend. You know there are some sin that you cannot tell anybody. You want to die with it. But what did you receive? The total cancellation of our sin. Is your sin forever cancelled? Come and celebrate Jesus! So you receive total cancellation of your sins. Why and how? Why and how? All because of the what? The cascading riches of his what? Of his grace. Glory to God. His grace make it possible for your sin to be forgiven. His grace. His grace. Look at the song, the choir some other time. He said, it's not by power. It's not by might. But by the spirit, which means it is only by grace, by the spirit of God that will become saved. Though they carry weight, you say God will forgive you your sin. Do press up. Do you understand what I'm saying now? It is not by work. It is by grace. Verse 8, where I'm going to. He said, this super abundant grace. <laughs> this what? Super what? This what? I can't hear your voice. How can you use, see, this super great grace is enough. This abundant grace is enough. Do you understand? But he said it is not just abundance. It is super abundance. Oh, 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 oh. It is multiple, extravagant, overflowing. Glory to God. It is super abundant. Tell you about the grace I receive. It's super abundant. And it's working in me right now. Is working for me right now. He said the super abundant grace is already powerful working in us. Working in us. And I'm going to show you something shortly. Don't lose me. Working in us. Releasing us all from forms of wisdom and practical understanding. Now listen to me. People have always asked. They have issue with grace. Because they feel like it's a license to sin. But I'm going to show you shortly. What grace produces? He said what? It's form of what? Of wisdom. So when you receive grace, there is a form of wisdom that is what? That is deposited inside of you. There is an higher level of understanding that you have. So follow me. I'm going to show you shortly. Romans 8.20. Romans 8.20. So the, the law was introduced into God's plan to bring the reality of our human sinfulness out of hiding. I'm still using TPT. Romans 5.20. So he said what? Romans 5, not Romans 8. Media, I need, I need to show something, please. So the law was introduced into God's plan to bring the idea of woman sinful out of what? Out of hiding. And yet, listen, what this is? When what? Whenever what? There's what? What? So whenever there's an increase in sin, what is he saying? Is he saying that we should increase in our sin? No. But he's saying that wherever kind of sin increase, there's always much grace that always supersedes what? Sin. Is that what you receive? So all sin, verse 21, he said, as just as sin reigned through death, 
so also this same conquering grace will reign as clean through what? Through righteousness. So what we receive is what we call sin conquering grace. So grace has the ability to do what? To conquer sin. Did you get that? I like how the MS translation put it. This verse. The message translation. He said, all that passing law against sin did not produce more lawbreakers, but sin didn't and doesn't have a chance in competition with the aggressive forgiveness we call grace. Did you hear that? That sin does not have a competition, does not have a stand with what? With the aggressiveness forgiveness we call grace. Now listen, I like these terms because it speaks, it speaks newer English. He said, you know, when you're playing ball, you say, um, Arsenal versus, give me one, now give me one. Who they beat Arsenal pass? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Who they beat Arsenal pass? Yeah. That's an Arsenal fan for this church. <laughs> 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 I'm not an Arsenal fan. I, who they beat Arsenal pass? Yeah. Ah, even for media, please. Who they beat Arsenal pass? <laughs> This, what is Arsenal in the league now? Eh? Second. Ah, ah. So, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so the Arsenal fan, they passed off. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay, who the beat man you pass? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, now nah, I understand now. So let's assume man you versus Arsenal meet versus who will win? So the, if that's your that's the definition, that's how you understand it. So <laughs> when grace and sin means who will win? <laughs> so it says when sin versus grace play a match and there is a collision between them, it says grace wins us down. Glory to God. So grace will always supersede sin. Do you hear what I just said now? So God's extravagant grace is seen in his radical forgiveness in the things that he provided for us. So on the cross, we see life extravagant grace, unmerited grace. Look at those two guys. They are already condemned. Sentence over for them. Already there to be hanged. But see what happened. See, hear this. You don't look for grace. Grace is the one looking for you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You don't look for grace. Grace found them. He said, for God's soul of the world, that he gave, he released it, he's looking for, I'm going to show you shortly. Grace is looking for men. You're not the one looking for grace. It's already available. So that guy on the cross found grace. Glory to God. Because it's already available. Say, grace is available for me. Grace is available for me. So he was already condemned, sentenced by men to death, but he found Christ. He found Christ. Is what? No one is beyond redemption. No matter the gravity of sin that is committed, no one is beyond redemption in Christ Jesus. Did you hear what I just said now? No one is what? I know sometimes this, this uh, pastor, you mean no one is beyond redemption. How do you mean? See? You see Boko Haram, those guys killing, kidnapping, raping, all sorts of things. Try, I say it all the time. Try, let them not kidnap you. Try as much as possible. Don't allow them to kill you. Do you understand? See, if they die, if they die, and they, they kill you, now you die. And the next day, that guy that killed you comes to church. I said, grace has found me. And he believed in his heart. Say, oh, no, 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 tarara. Heaven is sure and guaranteed. That is the message that we preach. He looks like, oh, how terrible. This guy is a murderer. He is a killer. He even killed a pastor. He killed pastor's wife and pastor's children. Try and let them not kill you. Don't be a illegal matter. Do you understand? Jackpa, go to fight. Retreat. Do you understand? Protect. Do everything possible to protect everything. Woman possible. Even Israel have drones. Even though they don't break that drones, they have drones protecting them. Eh? They are not doing prayer alone. They are not doing fasting. 
There's drones that is protecting. Do everything possible to protect so that you don't become a victim. Are you getting that? Because whoever, whoever destroy that person the next day can find Jesus. No one is beyond redemption. The Bible told us about Paul in the book of Acts chapter 6. Verse 57. I think second to the last verse. I'm not sure right now. But second to the last verse. Acts 6. He said, Stephen just gave one of the best teaching. You know, I said when you read the book of Acts 6, you will see the story of Stephen. He recites Genesis to Revelation and to Malachi. In one chapter, it spoke about how the law was given, how Moses, and he was saying all sorts of things. They were allowing him. But you know, the Jewish people, they hold the law so sacred. The moment he mentioned that the law was given by angels. Ah! Do you see? The, even now, even now, when I teach it now that law is not given by God, it's given by angels. People say like, Pastor, you are talking this thing, this pastor, what, what do you know? But this thing goes back to it. We are not saying what we think. We are saying what the Bible reveals. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is the gospel truth. And we could see it. So the moment Stephen said it, he said, some men just cut, they said they cast lots. Now, we oh yeah, are stone him. To, you know, I told you on Thursday, every sin, most of the sin, what they used to do? You see it? Yeah, stone to death. Stone to death. See, that you like her, you toast her. <laughs> she agree or she not agree. You can't go there over higher. Like just once they she report to we bear witness, he's stoned to death. Oh. <laughs> for not for things that should not be stonable. Do you understand what I'm saying now? They're stoned to death for almost everything. So right here, Stephen was there. He said what? He said instantly they cast lots. His clothes. That means they naked him. They put it on the feet of one of the guys. His name was Saul. He was there. He was one of the people who said, yes, kill this guy. Kill him. And he was stoned to death. The people, as Stephen was being stoned, he was seeing something greater and bigger. He said, I can see Jesus. You know, he saw the glory of the Lord. I guess now, but he was stoned to death. Now, the guy that executed his stoning to death I'm going to show you now. Open your Bible with me. So, First Timothy. First Timothy. Verse 12. First Timothy, verse 12. So after he have he has executed him, grace found him. Grace found him. He said, "What man has peace over with thanks to God for the way He has continually empowered me to answer our Lord Jesus Christ, the Anointed One, who found me trustworthy and authorized me to be His partner in this ministry." The person will die, don't die, oh. Now he has been commissioned to do ministry. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The next verse, verse 13. What was his message? Mercy did what? <laughs> Is that your life? Say, Grace found me. He said, Mercy kissed me, even though I used to what? A what? Do you see that? Even though I used to, a scorn now of what turned out to be true. I was ignorant. I know what, what I was doing. So those guys don't know what they are doing, even though they are killing and kidnapping. The moment they found Jesus, they come to the knowledge of truth. And we get what I'm saying? They come to the knowledge of truth. So the core of God's extravagant grace lies in his ability to dispense unmerited favor. Despite our mistakes, despite our shortcomings, despite our faults, God extends his grace to us without reservation. He extends his grace to us without reservation. It is a gift. Verse 14. Let me show you something as I begin to close. 
He says, I was flooded with such incredible grace. Glory to God. Like a river flowing with what? It's punk. Can you hear that? Until I was full of faith, love, Jesus, the anointed one. Glory to God. I was flooded with what? With such incredible grace. What was he flooded with? Are you getting that? Like a river flowing in its bank. Like a river flowing in its bank. Until I was full of faith and love. Tell me about grace overflows. Say grace always do much more. Grace will not only save you, but will fill you. Do you hear what I said now? So listen to me now. Grace does not only save, but fill you up. So this is where people miss it. So when you hear the message of grace, they hear it one-sided, but not hear the full message. Even though grace is unmerited, that is the truth. So it does not only have the ability to save, it has the ability to enable you. So most times, everywhere you see, there's something strengthening you to do good works. So in the Bible, Ephesians 2 verse 8 that we read, that what, it said, grace is by faith, not of work, lest any man should boast. Right? What do you say next? In verse 9, he said what happened? That you have been saved to do what? To do good works. So, when you are saved, there is an enablement. There is something that grace deposited inside of you to do good, do good works. So, grace is never a license for sin. It's never a license to begin to misbehave. So, he said we have become his poetry, recreated people that will fulfill this thing he has given us for we are joined to Jesus hundred one even before we were born God planned in advance verse 9 that the destiny of God to do what to do good works so we are safe to do good works safe to do good works first Timothy 1 verse 16 verse 15 let's start from verse 15 first Timothy 1 verse 15 It says, I can testify the word is true and deserve to be received by all. I can. Now he has been saved by grace. The grace is overflowing. What happened? He said, now I can testify the word is true. Deserve to be received by all. So when you receive the message of grace, there will be something compelling you to do what? To teach others. Because you are saved to do what? To save others. For Jesus came into the world to bring sinners to life, even me, the worst sinners of all, glory to God. Can you say, even me, the chief, what? The chief sinner. So when Christ saves you, listen to me, when you are saved, the purpose of your salvation is not only to save you, you must help others to become saved. You must teach others. You must open the eyes of others. Tell them about what God has done for you. Look who I was. Look who I am. Look what God has done. So Apostle Paul could say it. See, I was a persecutor. This is who I am. I blaspheme. I did all sorts of things. But now I am saved. And instead of helping others to become saved. Now that you have been saved, what are you doing with the salvation of Jesus? Verse 16. He said, yet I was captured by grace. Tell anybody I was captured by grace. So that Jesus could do what? <laughs> I love this. Could display to me the outpouring of the Spirit as a pattern to be what? For all those who could what? So do you hear that now? So the reason why there is a cascading love towards you, there is an extravagant love that was shown towards you, is so that your life can display God's love. I told you on Thursday, or be on Sunday, that some of my friends, when they see me now, I say, ah! Look at this guy, now bad guy. If God can save Ife, do you understand what I'm saying now? If God can save blessing, ha, has blessing. Even though she's quiet, now bad girl, no. If God can save her, she's not a good girl, then God can save him. Do you understand? If God can save this guy, even though he's wearing glass, you know we have this mindset. People will wear glass, they're always good boys. But you know it's not true, right? <laughs> you think there's no book. Huh? Until I try one on 100 level. No, this is my friend <laughs> in school. I've, I've told this guy this story before. The guy was young. He always wear glass. So I just assumed that the guy must know book. So we sat together in the exam hall. And we were writing. We were writing. I was looking at the guy. 
You know, sometimes you write something, you don't know the answer. But you look at the person, you know that, no, I don't know him. But this one you are writing is not the correct one. So I look, I don't know him, what you are writing. So I just lock up. I was doing my thing. And the guy was saying, bros, bros, I beg, wait till you write. I look the guy. I, in the exam, I just ask him, how old are you? <laughs> because me, I don't spend like seven years for a house after, after secondary school before I get admission. I don't become bros. Him, a fresh graduate, his brain is supposed to be fresh. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It just be like, look at this young girl now. She, she should enter university. Year one, we will have Victor. But you should not be asking, bros, I beg, what do you write? <laughs> I went to woo that guys. Are you okay with this your glass? <laughs> you know, Sabi Boo. I then remove your glass. Remove your glass. So we are some people who wear glass. Somebody's moving a glass now as I'm talking. <laughs> so people like people. I somebody's moving like that. Looking up and down. <laughs> they just like <laughs> all the one I've been saying since they did not laugh. Oh. <laughs> they did not look up and down. Now they want to look at who remove glass. It is you. <laughs> <laughs> Yet I was captured by grace. So grace captured so that Jesus can display to me. Listen to me. Jesus can display to my life the outpouring of his of his spirit as a pattern to be seen for all those who believed in me for eternal life. Now listen to me. If grace, if grace is licensed to sin, then this will be impossible. Because it can never be a pattern for others to become saved. Grace is a pattern for others to see and emulate and believe. Are you get what I'm saying now? You have never been taught this before. Are you get what I'm saying now? So people say, when we say when grace abound, when sin abound, grace abound much more. And the next thing was that, ah, pastor, then can we continue to sin? He said, no, we can't continue to sin and say grace will abound. But listen to me. But as much as that grace is abounding, there is what? Uh, there's sins abounding. There's grace that is super abounding. So, but why is grace super abounding over grace? So that people can see the pattern of God's love, the pattern of God's grace, the pattern of God's extravagant grace upon you. So people can know that, no, God is real. If God can change your life, then he can change my life. Then you and I can be bold to say to the world that Jesus is true, that Jesus is real, that Jesus came to help to die for my sin. Now you have saved me. Now I have been saved. Me that you know before, I am no longer the person. I am now a what? I am now a new creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Has God saved you? Has he shown his love? Has he bestowed grace upon you? Is his grace extravagant in nature? Come on, celebrate Jesus right now and stand on your feet and begin to bless the name of God and say thank you Jesus, thank you for your grace, thank you for your grace upon my life, thank you for saving me thank you for saving me thank you for salvation upon my life thank you for salvation, thank you for your grace, thank you for your grace thank you for your grace, thank you thank you, you saved me so I can be a pattern so others can see it enable me and strengthen me give me the boldness Lord give me the boldness and courage to be a true pattern of grace give me the boldness and courage to lead, to tell people about what you have done to showcase it, I'm going to tell the world I'm going to tell the world, I'm going to tell the world how beautiful you are how wonderful you are Confess his love right now. His grace has power to save. Say, God, give me the strength. Give me the strength to tell people how good you are, how lovely you are, how wonderful your grace is. How wonderful your grace is. I'm going to tell you to the world. 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 God's love is true. His grace is super abundant, extravagant in nature. Loving ever forgiving, ever loving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are free. I've been blessed. I've been blessed. Come and celebrate Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Having me blessed. Say the grace of God is sufficient for me. What are we going to say to our set man this morning? 
Say this after me. Say, thank you, Jesus.